Hey YouTube, after I did my entire Gibson um, collection uh, Monday, the other day, um, now's my entire Epiphone collection and uh, this is it. And uh, you might notice that it's, I, I didn't really notice this, it's just pretty much the same. Um, so it's an SG and an EBO. Um, kind of weird when I've actually started looking at the Fender Complete Collection and the Squire Complete Collection. It's kind of the same as well. Um, I seem to have a, a guitar and a short scale bass from each. Was not intentional, but that's how it happened. So, starting off with the uh, Epiphone EBO. Um, this has obviously been modified a little bit by me um, it, to look like Geezer Butler's bass from Black Sabbath. Uh, he used it on the Top of the Pops in 1978. Um, his wasn't a Gibson, his was a Joe D or John Birch. I can't remember which, which one of the two, but it was roughly EBO shaped. Um, his has got an extra bit of scratch plate here, which I will eventually cut make to make it look right, but um, I haven't done that yet. Uh, so, modifications on this, I got this cheap because the neck had snapped off um, and basically I bought the body, it was really cheap and I thought, oh, yeah, okay, handy, have, nice to have the pickup, I suppose, you know, I could put that pickup in anything, but the body, is like, where am I ever going to find, like, a short scale base neck, uh, so I asked the guy and he's like, yeah, I've still got the neck, you can have that with it, there was a tuner missing, so one of the tuners isn't original, um, and what had happened is the neck had snapped off and hadn't damaged the body but the, 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 the screws had been pulled out the back of the neck so the neck was kind of like all not mashed up but two of the screws sort of fitted the screws were all bent so I had to put new, new screws in and uh, it's now a, a, a set neck or a glued in neck it's basically I just filled it with glue and then put the, the bolts back in again to hold it and it's so it's still a bolt on neck but the neck doesn't come off anymore that might make it better I'm not one for super believing that uh Actually, I'm noticing this is quite uh, neck heavy. Um, I've got a feeling the other EBO, the Gibson one, the, the strap button's here somewhere rather than being on the neck bolt. Um, so it's a bit neck heavy. Saying that, I did manage to gig with it. I made this as a, a bit of a joke. I figured that because it had the neck repair, it was never really going to be worth that much money. And I thought, ah, I'm in the Black Sabbath tribute band after the end. So I'll paint it up. Silly, this actually glows in the dark as well. <laughs> it's like just. So that's why the paint doesn't look that good up close because glowing dark paint doesn't really paint on very well. It's not very good as paint. Um, I so EBO's just got a standard mud bucker pickup. This one has now got a jazz bass uh, in the rail there, a, a, a real jazz bass which actually was in the neck position of a seven string guitar I bought, uh, which I turned into a Telecaster. Um, so I put it in there. When I drew round the bit I was going to route on the body. When I painted it white, um, you could still see the pen marks, so I kind of drew a black box around it, which kind of looks good because it makes it look like it's a, a more fancier pickup than just being a jazz bass pickup. So wiring wise, I put in a rotary switch. So the rotary switch fully clockwise is the jazz bass pickup. Next one up is the, neck, the humbucker pickup, which is standard, what you, what you just get in one of these. Next one up is both of them in parallel, and then the last one is both of these wired as in series, so it's like a humbucker, like a double hum, I don't know, like a triple coil humbucker, triple bucker. Um, I did alter the headstock shape a little bit, there was a chunk out it, so I kind of just made it symmetrical, so it's not quite Epiphone shaped. I should really, if I wanted to hide it was an Epiphone, I would have got rid of it, I would have changed the trust rod cover to one that didn't see that on it. And uh, Papaya was, I got that at that gig there. Um, Yes, so that, that was before, so that, that was the last gig I was at, proper gig I was at before all this lockdown stuff, but this, when I played the one, the, our first gig as the Sabbath band with our new Aussie, um, we, I had stuck my sticker on it, I just felt it was too too much black and white, and it's like a little bit of colour, uh, Papaya, it's an awesome song, should look that up, and then um, when I was taking it to bits, I, I took it into the studio, and we had, uh, had this great idea, well, I think the new singer Brian had this idea, I was like, oh, we should all come on dressed as monks with robes and stuff like that, that'd be quite funny, and I think he was sort of joking, but we all kind of went, ah, that's a good idea, so we did that, and then we went into the studio, whatever night it was, um, a week before the gig, with all the monks robes and stuff, I, I turned up with this bass just for a laugh, 
I decided it was actually good enough to play with, so I'll just play with it. And um, because I'm wearing a hood, <laughs> so I couldn't really see where it was on the, ne the neck, so I put these extra um, glow in the dark big bits of paint on it. And then while I was doing that, I thought, well, why don't I just put crosses on the fingerboard as well? So it's got glow in the dark crosses on the fingerboard as well. So in, if you put it into position two, it's pretty much just the Epiphone EBO. Um, this one is a, ch a Chinese one, made in Indonesia, 08, so a 2008 one. I had a 98 one, um, one of the first ones that ever came, the first one in Scotland, apparently one of the first ones in Britain, like serial number eight, it was like, I seem to remember that, um, I ordered it as soon as I heard it was coming out, before it even arrived, because I always wanted an EBO and you couldn't get them back in the day. Um, I, I loved my, my SG guitar, but I played bass in a band. And I thought, oh, I'm an EBO, and this is the is that EBO that I traded in against. I traded my Aria Pro ZZB bass in against, which I always regretted doing. I only got sixty quid for it, um, but luckily, a couple of years ago, you've heard that story tons of times. I got it back. So like, yeah, the same, the exact same bass, not the same model, the same one, same dead as everyone. Um, yeah, so I think, unlike which, it's quite commonly known that the Epiphone ones. When you go back to this one, which is a 96, serial number starts S6, so it's Samic 96. Um, these are quite highly regarded and are better than the ones that followed. Um, I don't know when they stopped doing the Samic ones. Um, it's not also not as accurate a copy of the Gibson, as you can see behind me there, um, as the, the, the later on ones. It seems thinner. Although I think it's like only a couple of millimetres thinner, but I think the difference is that the, sh the chamfers on it are more pronounced, so it seems thinner, even though it isn't really that much thinner. Um, this one's been upgraded with pickups, but I'll, I'll do the bass first. I'll just I'll, I'll leave that a segue. So, playing through, this is the original pickup, playing through that bass amp and that speaker cabinet. <laughs> We've got a noise now, I'm going to turn the mic so it's not pointing the bass amp so it doesn't... Well that wasn't too noisy for you. So, uh, this doesn't... Someone asked me, Pat Jerry asked me how this compared to the Gibson one and it's not really the same thing, um, same shape, but... Uh, this feels much more like a normal bass. The Gibson one is very much a, it's a kind of different anode. It doesn't feel anything like a normal bass, like a P bass or something like that. This is kind of still an EBO, but they've kind of made it a bit less extreme. So it's got, the neck is a bit, it's wider and feels a bit more normal. Um, and the pickup's not quite the same thing. It's not quite as thuddy. Yeah, bass player in the band, Krakenhausen in, uh, plays. Um, one of these, and it, sound, it sounds great. Now turn the tone down. Turn the tone back up again. Whereas the one that I had, the 98 one, I'm pretty sure it had no tone whatsoever, it was just constantly like it sounded like it had a pillow in front of your amp. And this was actually my amp at the time when I had that, I used to gig with it. Um, so that's the just the neck pickup. We'll go, go to the, the jazz bass pickup, which this guitar shouldn't normally have. straight I think what's happened is I adjusted this when I built it for the gig and then I've basically not really played it and over a year it's been sitting in the attic so the neck has caught up with my trash rod adjustment so it's slightly flat so it's just a bit on the, a bit on the edge I just need a bit more relief in it um, but I'm quite picky yep and then so that's a uh, this is now both pickups Well, you can sort of 
see it sort of starting to glow with it. I think it just got darker there. Must have been a cloud just went out. You can sort of see it's kind of going the, the glowy darky colour. And then both of them in series. Which is the one I was using for Sabbath. Try and think about it. if I put on both the amps at the same time. If you can't hear them, I've got the a bit of fuzz on the twin note fuzz pedal. I might be, I might uh, use a bit of, um, I'm quite liking having the fuzz and the bass pedal on at the same, the two amps on at the same time, it really gives it quite a... <laughs> This one obviously I'm going to have to keep now because it's, a, it's the Geezer Butter one so uh, even if I don't end up using it for all the gigs I'll still have it. Maybe, I'm, we're now talking about, uh, I'm now detuning to C sharp so I'll probably run two basses because it's much easier to play like that, picks and open. That'd be best 
Let's just go. Continue playing Sabbath. Why not? Uh, utilizing my original. This is the guitar that I learned to play guitar on. So it's pretty much been for the first ten years of its life it played non-stop Sabbath. Um, oh, still got the bass pedal and then um, how to do that? that. Again, this came out in the attic when it was cold. So. Even the best guitar in the world, the strings still expand and contract depending on temperature. It really sounds quite thin playing the guitar after playing a bass through a first pedal and a bass amp. Go for clean. Yeah, so as I was saying earlier on, this one I put in humbucker sized P90s. The pickups that you get in this era of um, Epiphone are awful. Um, they were terrible. I think generally the hardware is as well. It's like kind of it does have this sort of clustered looking um, tuners on it, uh, which I think by the time it got to like the early two thousands, they were starting making these in China. So the actual guitars were much chunkier, but they had decent pickups and decent hardware all around. Whereas, but the actual guitar wasn't a patch on this. This is very um a very nice piece of mahogany. Always annoyed me, you can't really see it as much anymore, but it's kinda it's two bits. And this wee bit here. Can you see it's slightly like it's slightly like colour? So there's a wee band there. So it's a two piece mahogany body. Apart from this wee this wee chunk here, which is just annoying. Always annoyed me. You can't see it as much now as you did when it was new. Um it's a slightly lighter piece of wood. So if if it was just if it was only went to there, it's two pieces up to there and then that bit. Um <laughs> But when I had this, um, I this was my guitar, and then I decided I was going to play the Sabbath on it. This is my first real electric guitar, even though technically it was my third ever guitar. Um, my third ever electric guitar. First one was a a rubbish strat, something wrong with the neck. I didn't know that at the time. And then I had a Yamaha RGX three two one P, which was sort of like a kind of looked a bit like an Ibanez RG. Um, Floyd Rose, I was like, didn't know how the Floyd Rose worked, so it was either sitting up at forty five degree angle or sunk way into the body. It, yeah. It was, it was a waste. Um, so I wanted a real guitar, and this was it. Um, I, I did it last month. I did a, a, an anniversary of this because it was like how many years it was? Was it 2021 just now? It was like nine, it was 90, I was eight, I, something like that. It was like 25 years or something I've owned this guitar, or 24. <laughs> and one of my first ever upgrade things was to buy pickups off eBay, and I bought these ones which are actually gold um, because gold seemed to be cheaper. I think I paid 20 quid for them, something like that, and I caught Fat Cats with a PHAT, but it doesn't say anything on them, so I don't actually know who made them. Um, regardless of whether they're P90s or humbuckers, they sounded much better than the original ones, and I'm not sure at the time I realised the tone I only had P90s, but it's got P90s in it now. Um, so I'll just put the USG pedal on. In fact, I'll just use that first pedal, because that's the one that's meant to be like a Sabra Cadabra, which is obviously quite Sabra. <laughs> This one played so much better than the Gibson when I got when I bought the Gibson. This is before I knew what a trust rod was. So I would take that into the studio because it sounded better because it had the Gibson pickups in it. But this one just played so much easier. Um later on once I worked out once I found out what a trust rod was and bought this stupid spanner that you have to buy to get to, to adjust the trust rods in a Gibson, it is now much better. Um, I still wouldn't go 100% arguing that it plays better than this one. This one might just be a freak of nature though. I don't know, I think a lot of people say that about the Epiphone. So.
is pretty much set at what it is. Um, I don't know. I I'm not really that much of an Epiphone fan. Um, really, I like this one because it's my first guitar, and that one I've painted like so it's my Sabbath collection. I suppose it could also be. Um, I do like. It does work really well. I've been playing all these guitars with the new first pedal. What about the other new first pedal? What does that sound like? Brutal. No, 
holding June particularly well, but that's because, as I said, it's been in the attic. Um, fun, fun, fun. So I've actually got quite a lot of videos to do this week, but then um, a wee bit rushed just now because I'm working on this stupid base that I kind of wish I'd never started. Um, it's now ready for painting though. I've tried to put um, it's a West Tone Concord base, which I have mentioned previously. Um, and it's just... The idea was, right, I got this aluminium scratch plate stuff, or aluminium tread plate. I was going to make a scratch plate for it because I've had this base for years. It didn't have a scratch plate on it. And um, obviously you can't buy one because it's like a 1980s guitar, so I had to make one. Didn't want to buy the material and make it. Uh, so when I got this, I was like, yes, I'll do that. And I thought, right, well, this thing's been stripped. So I've now got the choice. I would never alter an original one. You know, you, can, you couldn't paint one of these sort of thing. So I had to, I had the excuse to paint it as other colours. I thought, paint it yellow, that'll be awesome. Put the black scratch plate on. I thought, well, I've also got the opportunity to put another pickup in it. So I thought, I'll put two P base pickups in it with a switch to make them both run in parallel in series. So you get like a mega bucker type sound. I thought, that's great. Had a look about, don't have any P base pickups. Um, and then I remembered I had uh, I old Ibanez musician pickups I got years ago. But that, that was like a a P, a, a P bass under a big square cover pickup and a jazz bass pickup, and it came with an active circuit. So you can't I couldn't just use one of them. So I had to put both. So I've now got it's now got three pickups in it: an active circuit with bass, middle, and treble, volume, tone, three on/off switches, an on switch, and an LED to tell you the actives on and an output jack. And boy, was it tough to get it to all fit in. That'll be a video for next week. And that'll be a long one and talking and complaining about what a hassle it was to do. Right down to today, the last thing I was doing was putting the battery box in the back. And um, all going well, kind of dug, dug the hole to put this in the back, put it in. Didn't go all the way in, I was just like, oh, I just need to adjust a wee bit, trying to get the thing back out again, and I snapped it. So hopefully, I've glued it back on again. Hopefully that's enough to hold it. Does it take the clip? Um, I think I might get away with that. Um, these battery boxes will be a couple of quid anyway. But what's really annoying about that is though that I bought a couple of these for. Um, it's the same battery box that goes in the Yamaha RGX A2s, and I've had two of them, both of them in a burst battery box, a burst lid. So I just bought new, you can't buy the lid on its own. And I think about a month ago, I found the two old ones without the lid and thought, there's no point in keeping them, I'll never use them, and I threw them out. And it's like, now I've got a broken box, but I've got the lid, so. I'm going to have a wee look to make sure I didn't throw them out, but I, I think I did. Which is more annoying than anything else, that's why I glued it. It's like, you know, just, I just begrudge paying money if I can avoid playing it. I wonder if I've actually got to. Um, I'm sit, still sitting, it's like I, I'm on average getting two subscribers a day, and since I got to 1698, um, I'm using, two, I'm using two computers, two, or two, two screens, pretty cleverly. Um, do, do. Have, there's six, 1699 now, so in the last two days I've got one. So if I re as have I made the 1700 for a wee, wee woohoo? 1699! So, somebody subscribed twice. So I was going to say just unsubscribe and then subscribe back again, I don't think that works. So, um, yeah, so that'd be nice. That'd be nice. 1700s for my, my entire iPhone collection and I managed to talk for half an hour even though I decided I wasn't going to and I had no plan and I managed to play a little bit sort of the solo of Never Say Die even though I can't remember what it goes like I don't think I've ever played it before but you, you can clean this the nice thin neck this one actually probably is almost worth what I paid for it, really. I think I paid like 200, 215 quid brand new, something like that. Um, a bit of a dent there, I don't, that was me that did that because it's my guitar. Um, and I think they're probably worth kind of almost about that anyway, um, because it's got this desirability thing, which is coming in with everything, you know, it's like things change over time, and I was, um, that West Tone I did a video of yesterday, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, they're 
expensive now. Folk are starting to cotton on that old on there really good. And it's like at the maybe when I had my first base, which was a West Tone Spectrum, I bought it for forty quid and sold it for twenty. Because West Tones were worth nothing back then, but once things started getting a bit older, and then maybe I think maybe it's when your guitar comes out they're not as good. Um, I mean this this doesn't compare to I did one well it was broken to be fair and and a, a really bad fret job so I got, got, got sent it back I did a video last year of a green one of these Epiphone that had P90s in it not P90 sized humbuckers and the thing looked amazing but it was nothing compared to this it was like ha it, it, just going by how much it costs to build you could tell by looking at it the build cost of that was half what this one was um, I don't think it was cheap it was like well saying that this was 200 and something quid 20 years ago and this one was 300 and something quid now so inflation you know so that the reason that, that is i suppose if you just took inflation up this would probably be four or five hundred quid now they've just got to try and keep um guitars down at a reasonable level i suppose so th therefore they're much cheaper um so this is kind of mm, arguably better than those gibson tribute ones like it's a better built guitar um bad bad hardware but again i think when uh, Gibson contracted Samick to build these I don't think they expected them to come out like this so I think they down spec the pickups so I'd be like right, well put um, uh, that's kind of this has got to compete with that and they're like six, 700 quid at the time these are 200 something quid if you put pickups like that in this nobody's going to buy well some people are but you're going to go well they sound the same and this one actually plays slightly better so they intentionally put bad ones in um, at least that's my theory I have nothing to corroborate that and um it might not even be true. Yeah, 32 minutes. Rock on, got some interesting videos coming up in the next couple of days. Uh, I've got a pedal. The pedal, which actually is why I bought that twin note fuzz pedal. I did have a fuzz, the, the Terminator one, but I bought that because it had the Terminator on it. And this pedal was on Anderton's, and I saw it and went, I have to have that until I saw the price. So I didn't buy it, but now I've got a shot of it. That's it there. Um, but I'll keep it a bit of secret just now. It's cool. Rock on! And press the button.